listen up, you blundering fools. It's time for the Cracktastic Plastic Podcast. Get all the toy talk your evil heart could desire from these little poops. Jason, Elgin, and Spooty. <laughs> Yo, Joe, and welcome to the Cracktastic Plastic Podcast, where a group of friends get together to talk about one of our shared loves. Hot dogs. Toy collecting. That's right. We're here to celebrate how these little colorful pieces of hot dogs can transform you into a little hot dog again. If this is your first time listening to us. I relish that moment. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Or watching us on YouTube, where you should definitely probably go there. Uh, First of all, thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it, don't we? Catch up on episodes. Jesus. (laughs) <laughs> You're also going to learn soon enough that Elgin's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know about that. And also, we are not toy experts. We're enthusiasts, so we're not always going to get the details right. And speaking of details, let me introduce everyone. Hi, I'm Jason. That's me. There's Elgin. That's me. And there's Spooty. It's not Elgin. That's <laughs> right. Oh, gosh. Many were confused. <laughs> uh-huh. This week, we're diving into the vibrant world of toy repaints. Whether it's giving a classic figure a fresh coat or transforming a character into a new version altogether, repaints have become a beloved and sometimes controversial aspect of toy collecting. Repaints. Yeah. It's a thing. Sure is. Later on, Elgin's going to take us on a tour of a toy store, and it's going to be so cool. Mm Mm-hmm. That's right, and then lastly, we'll hear from you guys with Spooty on your thoughts on repaints, and I can't wait to hear all those comments. Uh-huh. You can follow us on all the social media platforms, including Patreon, and those links can be found at our super sweet cr- website, cracktasticplastic.com. And while you're surfing the interwebs, be sure to stop by our sponsors page, toyhacks.com, for all your repro label needs. They also have an armory there where you can get some toy-accurate 3D-printed weaponry, and tons of amazing sticker sets for your toys. We also have a monthly contest that Elgin is going to tell you all about. Yeah, every month we give away a $5 coupon to Toy Hacks. Uh, We usually post a picture on all our social media pages. Uh, You can either comment or draw or something, but the main thing is going to out to that post and commenting. Entering the contest. And actually commenting on it so that we can pick what you say or do, and then give you a $5 coupon to Toy Hacks to spend at Toy Hacks. We love doing that. Thank you, Elgin. You're That's welcome, toyhacks.com. Jason. But right now we're going to talk about what toys we picked up lately in a segment we call Thrill of the Hunt. Listen up, you fools. If anyone knows more about searching for the most unique items in the world, it's me. Cobra Commander! In my reign as Cobra's leader, I have acquired countless items, but those meddling Joes have foiled my attempt at worldwide domination over and over again. But it's the thrill of the hunt that fuels my superb rule of Cobra. Pay attention to my loyal subordinates as they tell you of their latest exploits and acquisitions. It's the thrill of the hunt! Cobra! All right, let's go over to Spoody. What have you picked up lately, pal? Some things. Cool. Some Show us. Show us. <laughs> <laughs> that was my own. Yeah. Um, so, so, Mr. Elgin. That's right bad. there. Uh, picked me up from, where was it, Dollar General? Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree. So, even better. Even cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there's five... Uh, G1 Transformer figure. Uh, I mean, they're like PVC f- figures. They don't transform or move or anything. Statues. But they, yes. Them. But they have a, a little foily card with them, too. There's a sound wave, a shit face, uh, Starscream, cool, uh, a Megatron, um, Optimus Prime with no painted windows. So These are weird. exactly the same toys they just had. Yeah. But they're so different now. Because they have a 
a, card. A bonus added a foil bonus card. card yeah. Look at that shininess. Yeah. Yeah. For a then, buck twenty five each. Yeah, and then I, I haven't opened it yet because I just got it also. Uh someone uh snagged a, a two pack with uh the war or the the uh the, the leg- legacy, uh dead end and skull grin two pack that was like what thirteen bucks or something. Yeah. Um when Probably. they were like twenty five bucks a piece or something when they first came mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Got that, haven't opened it, you seen them. A lot of those came out, I think, during Christmas time. Yeah. It's yeah. like a, hey, get your kid a two-pack of Transformers. Um, and then I got, the coolest one I got, uh, is the Titans Returns uh, broadside triple changer. He doesn't have, was it Skywarp, I think, is a little tiny uh, jet that doesn't transform but goes on the deck when he is in his cool. aircraft carrier mode. Turns he's that, cool. Uh, that's cool. He he showed up in the cartoon a lot, like way out of proportion size wise, oh, yeah. <laughs> like a super giant jet that all the transformers could fit in, and he'd carry them from planet to planet, kind of thing. Hmm. In jet mode, interesting. But then, but he's cool. I always liked his colors, that red and gray, and and then seeing that translucent blue throughout his cockpit and the gun is neat. And he's yeah. uh he's. Pretty faithful to the like the original like design. Yeah. So. Cool. He's over there. Which mine does. It's it's in there somewhere. Uh, can you get him? Yeah. Unless Mine's actually the missing the stuff. cockpit, like the, the little blue. Plastic Bummer. Blue. Yeah. Hmm. That's all I got. All right, this Elgin. Thing. Well, I brought a. <laughs> don't mind the stuff in front. Of That's <laughs> the topic. <laughs> um, <clears throat> later on the show. So I bought a bunch of the uh, Mutant Mayhem Ninja Turtles. Um, I opened all of the the two packs, so they made a uh, basically like a battle pack, uh, two pack figures with a like a background diorama that you can connect together. It was a collect and connect set. So basically, you can have like a street scene when you connect all four pieces together. So you have like a continuous street with like storefronts. And everything, so you can. So I'm basically putting those on my shelf, so it's like a background, and I'm going to put the figures and stuff for other things in front of it. So um, I got them all for. I found all four turtles, so that's the key. Yep, yep. <laughs> is, is finding all four, and I got them all on on sale. They're all half off. You know, that's good. Belgianomics. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, two two key things: getting on clearance and getting all four. So. Yep, yep. So each each turtle came with a a bad guy, a villain to fight. So, we, and aren't they all a little different than the single releases? Right? Yeah. So these are basically all like battle damage. If you want to right. think of them like that, um, I'll show the turtles here first, and get to the the villains. Um, so basically, all of them. So we have Leonardo, uh, kind of basically some scratches and stuff and dirt on him. Uh, so another repaint. repaint. <laughs> Uh, so you have that. I forgot to pass them around. Uh, and then we got Raph, and like I said, he's battle damage. The kind of nice thing with this is that um, they didn't come with the uh, extra weapons, like on the weapons rack. Mm-hmm. So I already have all the weapons anyway. I don't really need more of the same weapons. They just gave them their basic weapons, like their katanas or their size right. or their uh, bow staff and. All that stuff. So that was kind of nice. It was just just their main weapon, you know. It's like I don't need more things to lose. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, one set is fine. So, so basically, yeah, they're all kind of battle damaged, and they're all um, kind of similar to what they looked like before, just with like scratches and stuff on them. So I got all four of those turtles. So each one, like I said, came with a villain. I didn't really have any of the villains because I originally, when I was looking at these, I love the movie, Mutant Mayhem. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just wanted to get the four turtles and be like, okay, that's good. They're all so Michelangelo cool. looks special. Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> but I can't, I can't help that, I guess. I did see somebody painted... Um, like their eyes fully white, like a, like a comic book style, mm-hmm. where like, you know, doesn't mask. Yeah, of. great. 
Which was kind of cool because it kind of gave him like that more, which they did in the movie. Like at the beginning of the movie, they had him like looking like that. So, Um, yeah, all their weapons will fit on them as well. It's kind of, (laughs) which Josh is doing right now. Anyway, so uh, one of the villains came, I think Leonardo came with with this one. This is Superfly. Uh, Ice Cube voiced him in the movie, and he comes with a little laser gun that fell off. And they each have weapons as well. Like, they're a single weapon. So he has, like, a little laser pistol thing, gun thing. Some translucent wings and his giant claw hand and everything. So he was the main bad guy in the leader in the movie. Um, if you've seen the movie, I guess. So good. Uh, and then we got uh, Bebop. And he's got kind of his drill gun. Uh, reminiscent of the vintage figure, and all of these figures are bow damaged as well, so they're re- little hands stick yeah <laughs> uh, um bow damage from like the, the the original releases of these figures because they were single carded figures as well that came out um, so there's bebop and then we got rock steady looks like he's shooting himself because his gun doesn't really fit in his hand that well. I believe John Cena voices Rocksteady. Can't remember who voices Bebop. So there he is there. And of course we have Leatherhead. That's kind of different. They made him, they made her, because it's not voiced by a Rose Byrne, um, Australian. I think he was originally Cajun in the original cartoon. But she is also battle damaged. Just love the art style of this cart of this movie, yeah. and these toys are exact. Yeah, that, that's that's the one the... nice thing is that they look exactly like they did in the movie, which is which is kind of nice. It's actually. a really cool thing, yeah. <laughs> especially with yeah. And like I said, I wasn't really looking to get any villains, but having a two pack with those scenes and getting you know, kind of a different version of battle damage. So you could do like a before and after you could, you know, have them the, since I have the regular figures, the turtles like before the fight, after the fight and they have like damage. So it'd be kind of a interesting thing if, if somebody wanted to do something like that as well for toy photography, I guess. The other big question everyone's thinking, are you going to get the rest of the villains now that you got a good start on them? No. <laughs> uh, unless they're on clearance. Yeah, I don't know if I can get them on clearance. Oh. But, I mean, if they're... I wish they'd do, two like, for one. two-pack stuff, but... Oh, yeah. I don't know if they will. I do have the Pizza Fire van, which I got on clearance, <laughs> and one of the cycles, the sewer cycle, also on clearance. Still looking for that ninja kick one that doesn't mm. seem to be on clearance anywhere. <laughs> you need to start collecting toys that actually like go on clearance. Yeah. Yeah. You get more that way. <laughs> yeah. For his, for his little. But yeah. That's all, that's all I brought because I got limited space for all the other stuff. <laughs> topic th- yeah, stuff. All right. Yeah. Um, I went to Des Moines Con last weekend. Des Moines big comic con. and Yeah. I've got thoughts, but okay. I'll try to keep them to a minimum. It's, I just, I love, uh, I don't know if I want to get into it, just the like, I love that anime has swept the youth of today, sure, and it's still around. I just don't know where it came from and how it's still here. It's like... I think Japan. No, I... <laughs> I know that part. Um, but, like, that's all it was. There were, like, two or three booths that had toys. Oh, most mostly of, anime. Out of like 200 booths. Pokemon cards and other... And little chibi play. things and little anime this and anime that. and that, Which is, again, full of kids. It was mm-hmm. great. It was cool. I love it that I wished, <laughs> you know, <laughs> could have been exposed to that as young as sure. they are getting it. So... It just there wasn't a lot for me there, really. Yeah. But and so all I ended up getting there was a third party Transformer seller there, which was great. And I spent the most time talking to him mm-hmm. than anyone. We was talking Transformers the whole time, but he didn't really ha I don't do third party really, but I'm like, if there was a Starscream there or something I might have, but sure. I didn't end up getting something. So 
Here's what I get in those situations. I just get decorations. <laughs> Here's some just like some, some tin signs. signs yeah. Just Autobot and Decepticon signs. Cool. Yeah, like ten bucks a piece, nothing crazy, but Yeah. Do you even have anywhere to put them up? No, uh, I got some room on a uh, door. Yeah, or a bathroom. They're, yeah, they're metal, they'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, they'll rust. Um Patina. Good. Patina. Yeah. Battle damage. <laughs> See a star screen, buy a star screen. Actually, Tiffany got this from me from Dollar General. I thought I had this, but I did not. And um, not only is this, you know, I forget what they call it, uh, Authentics. This is the line, oh. the Dollar General, Dollar Tree type line, Authentics. Sure. You know, the super kitted version, but they changed them a bit. Plus, this is neat packaging, so mm -hmm. it'll look really good on the wall. I like it. Um, and Tiffany got for me. So well, speaking of Tiffany, she oh, made this shirt for me. Look at that. that! Jason gave me as well. She did. It's the masters of the Elgenomics. Yeah, we were. She was doing some shirt. She makes shirts and stuff, and yeah. we were in the make shirts aisle. And I'm like, they have glow in the dark stuff. And then it just was like, <laughs> oh, I know what we need to do. Yeah. And then two days later, we had a shirt. Yeah. Um, so shout out to her for making the shirt. Too. Speaking of, I uh, Magic the Gathering mm -hmm. put out some Transformers stuff, and I was able to just buy this separately on, I think, Amazon Prime. Cool. Uh, just a Starscream card. I don't do magic or anything. I don't know what any of that means on there, but it's Starscream, and it's small, and it'll fit on my Starscream section. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, yeah. Tiffany got me this, too. A little, the Pocket Pop. Keychain pops. This is a little other face that I didn't <laughs> actually have. So yeah, I got a that's few like two and pocket two, pops. Yeah, I do too. And she, I'll just say she's not frustrated, but you know it's hard to shop for me. Yeah. I know. So she got two. <laughs> she got two things. That's that is pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. Um, and then before I get into other things, I think uh, I still I didn't realize I didn't have this universe uh, Thundercracker because hmm. I. Kind of half acidly started a Wing Wednesday hashtag for our pages. <laughs> and so things with wings. And I was going to do like all three Seekers. And I have lots of sets of those. Sure. And that gives me lots of Wednesdays. But um, then I went to start doing it. And I'm like, shit, I don't have this guy. So hmm. finally got him. He's neat. Just a kind of based on the old uh, Tetra Jet. He's got neat little underslung cannon guns. Oh, How they. What? Universe, that one is. Yep. <coughs> and then, speaking of Wing Wednesday, right up front here, pretty excited. I, I know, like, right before they announced this dude, I was like, it's a Beast Wars character, Magmatron. And I didn't, I'm not a big Beast Wars huh. guy, but I, like, I remember finding it and, like, Spooty, you got to see this Beast of Beast combiner thing. And I know I sent you, like, pictures of, like, the original Beast Wars guy. Yeah. And I was just like, because he just looks so mean and tough. You look at his face, and it's just anything with wings, whether it's actual wings or door wings or plain wings. I don't know, man. I just, that aesthetic so cool to me. <laughs> and this, there's nothing like this with the wings set so high, and it's just so bizarre. It's three dinosaurs. That make up one giant badass Magmatron. The unique thing is that the dinosaurs don't have an alt mode. They're just dinosaurs or they're this. Really? So that's a neat, weird thing. But cool. And then, so yeah, I got some more things. But they kind of <laughs> go into uh, today's topic of repaints. Um, I got this uh, set... The other day called the Dramatic Capture Series, the Decepticon Nemesis Bridge Set. And so from the, I know. So Takara is putting this line together, Dramatic Capture Series, and they're they're doing some other ones too. Mm -hmm. uh, they said series, so there's going to be more. But um, the Decepticon Nemesis Bridge Set, so remember in the, there's in the movie, like they're getting on the Nemesis to take off. Mm -hmm. to chase the Autobots, and it's just the, basically the three 
big leader guys. Oh, yeah. Um, but they're all repaints. And so up first we got Star or we got Soundwave. He's a a really similar to that Netflix version. It is the Netflix version, but they um trying to remember what they changed. Like a premium finish. Yep, premium finish. They like put some red in his little bullet holes and on his gun. This gun they don't have the red stripe, which is different. I think um, there's this, some red, this little paint on his shoulders is a little different. The, I think the shade of gray is also a tiny bit lighter. Um, just more screen accuracy. Just each step they do, hmm. they just make it a little more. And then shiny paint. Shinier paint. And same with uh, laser beak, the, just the paint on, on the little birdies. Just just better paint. And it's coming from Takara over there. It's just better. And then we got Shockwave. Um, he's a different shade of purple. I think he's lighter. I'm trying to remember. And then like his legs and his what on the original toy, that grit cannon, like the cover of the cannon is his backpack is a light light gray now. And it just used to be all kind of purple before in that original version. And he doesn't come with all that extra armor, bull crap, and just a nice, neat version. More accurate. And then when I really noticed the finish is on this Megatron. And like I said, I've got like 47 versions of this Earthrise Megatron. And like, this is 100 million percent the best one out of all of them. Just that there's just a shiny silver grayness on him that's just unreal the he's got like the it's dumb just hit the color scheme on his little ab buttons it's just such a little thing but like it's so accurate just that red and blue and that yeah just it's dumb but but you can just see that the way the shimmer of that silver it's not that good on any of the others <laughs> for sure it's and he it, turns into a tank i'm guessing yep I think his face is a little more, I don't know, just more accurate, too. Yeah. But, uh, man, he looks like a badass Megatron. <laughs> and definitely different uh, comparatively. And yeah. Two more. Um, then there's this other pack that Takara put out called Ghost Starscream versus... Haunted Waspinator, and they've been doing this even back in the Beast Wars days, even though I don't have a lot. Like, they did a lot of versus packs, just okay. characters right. that would to re release stuff and make two packs and spend get more money. And but they people <laughs> liked them. And uh, there's this little scene where the ghost of Star Scream comes back and fights Waspinator. And so, this I have this original version, but the, the green's darker, the brownish. Uh, bronze on his legs is deeper and richer. The gold on his butt is goldier. His eyes, a little purple, is just got. It's just subtle. It's subtle on that one, but this is the oh yeah. Here's we can see him in person. So it's you know, some people, you know, some people get bent out of shape out of over less, but yeah, like the yellow versus gold, it definitely you can tell and. That green is just more cartoony green versus this deeper, this one's darker green. One. Yeah, I think I like this newer one. Yep. Better. Oh yeah, yeah, for I mean, sure. Comparing these two, for sure. It just I don't know. again subtle, but yeah. And then so he came in a two pack. With my first, oh, I'm gonna phone. Um, Ghost Starscream. I don't think I have a clear one, and this one was based on that was the Kingdom mold of Waspinator, and mm -hmm. this is the Studio Series version of Starscream, where the Coronation Starscream, which is a little different than the Earthrise one, and he's got like different molded hands mm -hmm. with fingers that move and extend and. Um, he's got a different head. He's got Thundercracker's head with his open, open yelling mouth. But and then they change the Decepticon symbol to red. But most of it's clear. There's a little bit of opaqueness, but 
Um, I guess, do you call it a repaint? I don't know about that, but he's definitely my prettiest one, and uh, <laughs> it's just such a neat concept. It's scary as hell to play with and transform because so it'll eventually be plastic, brittle. Yeah. But isn't he neat? It's like holding him against the light is awesome. Uh -huh. Like you have to have him like backlit almost. On, yeah, I know. saw some pictures online of just some cool lighting effects under him or yeah, behind so him that. Don't want to actually do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, neat. And so Pretty they've cool. you know they've made lots of versions of this Ghost Star Scream, and that's the yeah first one. Oh, I guess I got a Super Seven one that's kind of sparkly and stuff. Okay, but um. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, guys. Uh, so there's w one way to repaint something is to give it a premium finish. Sure. You know, uh, push towards more cartoon accuracy. Sure. Or go in the other way and more of a original toy accuracy. Just releasing the same exact mold of a toy, huh. but painting it different. Um. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, for it, there you are, against it. There are times I don't. All or sure. nothing. Which one is it? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <It's not quite laughs> a, there's a bunch of gray area, I think. Yeah. I mean, with these turtles, these He's colorblind. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. Uh, with these turtles, it's it's literally just a. They just added some some battle damage. I mean, right. they just added, it's literally the same exact toy, except they just painted on some scars. That feels more cash grabby, right? Yeah, and you know, put it against a versus. It's like a versus, like yours. Yep. You know, it it definitely. That's why it's like I'm waiting till it went on clearance. I'm like, I'm not yeah. gonna pay full price. Yeah. It looked cool, but I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna pay full price for something that is literally just a repaint of. There's like nothing new added, really. Really. Other yeah. than some paint. <laughs> Um, the one, I, so I have a bunch of stuff out here. I knew you, Motu had some, but I didn't, I just didn't yeah. gather that they really had as many as they do. Now, when, when they change, when they make a different character, I, I, it feels a little more accepting, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, than some of them. One I recently opened was this man at arms. Um, Whoa. Uh, so he, Here's the regular man at arms. What he looks like for or most of these are origins. I have like one vintage one out here, but um, so that's this is what a normal man at arms origin figure would look like. Okay, he's got that kind of green clothing. It's supposed to be clothing, and then his armor, that kind of orangish armor, and that's normal head, his hat. <laughs> <laughs> they recently put out a a snake, snake armor, snake. Capture, whatever it's called. Mm. It's part of the Snakeman series. So in 2000X, uh, I think during the sec second season, they started doing Rise of the Snakeman, basically. And King Hiss was coming back and all this stuff. And you had everything was Snakeman related. Yeah. So this is kind of a nod to the 2000X show, but it's literally a repaint. Not only is his armor repainted, but his clothing or his, his body they kept a couple pieces, which when I opened this up, I'm like, why didn't they just color it the same as the upper shoulder pad? But his forearm is the same color as the original, and his shin guard is the same color as the original. Why couldn't you keep it the same as right. That's his, a good question. his body and his shoulder? And the did answer they run is... Out of, did they run out oh, of paint? Yeah. Or, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what's, what's huh, the deal? That's a choice. But, I mean, this one is a straight-up repaint. There's... So it's not a new character. It's, it's still it's still Man at Arms, Arms just in a he's different a, line. Yeah, yeah, because he's an inventor. Where? He's a scientist. When they start fighting all these snake men, oh, I gotta invent a new weapon to fight snakes. So he has a new weapon. It's mm -hmm. like a snake capture thing, but it's still the same character. It's still Man yeah. at Arms. He's just now he's upgraded himself. So he's now yeah snake. Repaint. Snake guy, yeah. So a straight repaint. So it's like, eh, that's... Uh, yeah, feels like a cash grab. Um, with Roboto... Yeah, wow. Uh, this was... What the vintage... This is an origin one as well. The, when the What the vintage one looked like was similar to this as well. So the vintage figure looked like that. What they ended up doing was coming out with this other one, which was a mini-comic version. So what they like doing a lot too is... 
making the figure look like what they look like in the mini comic that came with the vintage figure. I kind of like that one more. Yeah. Well, I'm so used you, to the blue and red, but yeah, I wish. But yeah, yeah. So that what they didn't do cool. in the the blue and red one was put his heart in his chest like they did in the vintage figure. And so they they this just was a chance to fix that. Mistake. Yeah, and they, and they didn't. Yeah, <laughs> all they did was put the chest his heart on his the outside, which is he looks accurate to the mini comic, so that's cool. Yeah, but it's really the same figure, just repainted. So same like, character. Same character, Re- just repainted. Just different version. Did yeah. they do a lot? Just side note, did they do a lot of mini comic repaints? They have done a trap jaw and triclops and manny faces so far in Origins. It's not a ton, but. Oh, and this guy, Stratos. Stratos! We got <laughs> what he'd normally look like in vintage. And then, of course, late night Stratos. Late night Stratos. Which is a mini comic version. So, same character, just repainted. And then we have an evil Lynn. This would be her normal yellow vintage color of the figure, which he would never actually look like in filmation, but what the vintage figure looked like. And then... E. Simpson's character. Yeah. <laughs> and the 2000X version of what she looks like. should put a Marge head on and her. And literally just, <laughs> there's nothing other than the color, her body color, and, and kind of the other... The purple yeah. is a little darker and stuff, but same, literally the same. Um, so you apparently don't hate it because you keep buying uh, both versions. Well, as a completist, yep, I, I yep. have to keep buying things. <laughs> ah. Yep. Now, the Sorceress is a little different. The This would be the normal kind of vintage-y color with the kind of the, per, the orange and blue in color and white. And then they did... This version that was only released with Castle Grayskull. So it was like the you know special sorceress. But still sorceress. Mm-hmm. But they just kind of did this transparent wings and kind of all white body. Which is cool. You can only get it when you buy Castle Grayskull. Exclusive. Exclusive. But it, the white is, is that... It's the same character. Does same she character. appear in the... I don't. Show. I don't remember her ever Being looking like that. But <laughs> yeah, looking ghost like. Um, this Tila. So, oh boy. So we have regular Tila, and then Which you have this is. green version of her. Actually, this is not Tila. This is now a new figure. This is the Green Goddess. So if you go back to the comics, the Green Goddess was the person that actually gave He Man his. Uh, sword and his shield, his axe and his power harness. Um, the power harness is actually where He Man gets his power from, not oh. really any. So if that, but that's like original comics, yep. like from, from when they first started. So he meets his so whole He Man is basically just a caveman from a tribe, and he goes out to, you know saves some people and he runs into the green goddess. She gives him all these weapons and then he becomes He-Man. He takes the sword of He and becomes He-Man. Yeah. So that's a new character. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I didn't write any sense. Yeah, I didn't write any of that stuff. That's, I'm just, <laughs> that's just the history of him. Uh, but that's a new character. But it's literally the exact same figure, just repainted green as the green goddess. Um, but when you come to He-Man, you have, once again, some new characters, which is, like, I can feel a little more accepting yeah. of it. When it's a new character. Yeah. So you have, you know, a standard He-Man from Origins there, looking all heroic. Mm-hmm. And then you can have the same character and paint him a little differently, and you get Wondar, or Wonderbred He-Man, or whatever Different you want to call him. Savage He-Man. And then you can paint him again. And become anti Eternia He Man, the opposite of regular He Man, who uh, the, his castle is called Hell Skull, and he lives in anti Eternia. Kind of like, like Bizarro World, if you think of it that way. Speaking of Bizarro. And then, of course, you have Faker. You can paint him again and turn him into Faker, the robotic, uh, the robotic exact replica of He Man that looks exactly and like He Man. Skeletor colors. Yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, which I never I never understood why he's like, how would this fool anybody? <laughs> it doesn't even look like He-Man. <laughs> it's like, he's really cold. Really yeah. cold He-Man. Yeah. But you get him. So that I mean that's a little more accepting for me. They're like, okay, we have a new figure. You got you know some take some other parts of things and kind of kid bash it to Those make are some drastic differences. A, too. a new figure. Yeah. One of the kind of vintage figures I have is uh, Beast Man and Moss Man. So these are the exact same figure, the molds, except they flocked Moss Man, and then so if you take off all the flocking of Moss Man, he'll basically look like Beast Man but green. It's it's kind of weird. Like, he just looks shiny green if you take off all the flocking. But that's the same mold, his face. And Down to the head sculpt, yeah. Yep, yeah, the body, arms, legs, everything is the same. It just They just painted him green and put flocking on him and gave him a different set, weapon set. But two very different characters. But two very different yeah. characters. Another idea of that same thing is you have Merman and Stinkor. They're both basically they're the same figure, just repainted, and then added stank to Stinkor, <laughs> <laughs> supposedly. Yeah, but it's the same and figure. Algae to the other. One. Yeah, mm-hmm. same same figure, just repainted, and made a new character out of. At the time for vintage figures, when a lot of this was like, well, we have one mold. How many more figures can we get yeah. out of this one mold? Okay, well, let's move some parts around. And now we have a new figure. A lot of that was part swapping, but a lot of it came down to painting new figures as well. Uh, I think that's all of the Moti stuff I have. I have some other Final Faction figures because they were cheap as well. And they were a Dollar Tree uh, thing, a toy line. And um, there's kind of a few of them I have. I didn't bring all There's some. They did a like a regular line, and then they came out with this limited edition gold and venom uh figures for the car and the so the venom was for the car and the gold was for the alpha team um so we can have their their the bad guy car and leader diabol this was his normal kind of red color and then they made him a venom version of it with like green and black he looks a little more menacing i guess but these are all like most of these are all straight repaints of figures uh with crepitus the bounty hunter you have there the gray version is the original and then the venom version that green and black as well just because they're final faction it's hard not to think they were completely motivated by making as much money off right. of one mold as possible yeah the one cool thing with like the the repaints are you know okay, but when they switch to like this translucent plastic for this ACRM mm-hmm. character, I was like, then it's like, yeah, okay, I'm getting excited oh, yeah, now. Cool. <laughs> I'm getting excited about these repaints, um, and that's those that's one of the cooler figures that they've they put out. The same for like their leader Steadfast. Um, they made like a regular kind of army character guy with the bionic arm, and then they gave him a translucent arm. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of a winter soldier esque, you know, left arm. So that's kind of a cool thing. And then I just brought Ruck, Ruck as well, just because he's kind of the standard of what they did for repainting a lot of the figures, giving them that black and gold when it was just kind of army colors. But I definitely prefer when they, if they use some different type of plastic, like translucent or something. To get, make it pop a little more, just doing straight repaint is kind of feels lazy, kind of on on their part, and it feels like they just want to sell more toys, <laughs> mm-hmm. which they do. Yeah, That's which fine. which is fine. it's a business. I understand that, but um, but definitely when they've when they change the characters, you know, using the same parts but like repainting them, yeah. it does. You know, it feels like a little more effort. In, into it like some creativity put into it like okay if we you know but because looking at these especially merman and stinkor like looking at their head sculpts it can't be the same it's like there's no way and you look closer and it's like oh shit yeah all they did was just paint around that <laughs> and just paint yeah. there and it's like yeah okay it's actually really cool yeah it's like that took some some creativity and some effort into it 
but yeah, it just when I when I opened this man at arms, I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, why want those silver? I know. I was just like, well, you could just do the all of it. You are you already yeah, yeah. I thought about it. <laughs> Spray paint. Or yeah, I'm like, just do the rest. Like, I I could feel more accepting. It's just like, oh, we ran out of everything. You know, Here's the parts. same one. Yeah. 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 It just I, I don't know. <laughs> that was really irritating. <laughs> Well, um, Spooty, how do you feel about repaints? Do you, where's your stance? Do you? Apparently I'll still buy them. Right. um, War for Cybertron has like 40 of them. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, the Lamborghini mold is is at least a dozen of those. Yeah, then you got like uh, Trailbreaker, he's got three or four, Grapple's got three or four, Mm -hmm. um... I mean, it goes all the way back to the G1, too. Yep. Yeah. Ratchet and Ironhide are the same thing. A couple of the, couple of the cars are, too. The Seekers are all the same, more or less. Yeah. At least the three main ones. Um, so you don't mind when they're different characters, they're different for sure. Characters. You're I mean, like, give me them all. <laughs> I mean, I, I still have multiples of... The same character that have been slightly repainted. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to, I can't see yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch. <laughs> I mean, I don't really mind. I, it's kind of annoying, but like they could come out with something new. Do you have a favorite example or a favorite? Set of characters that are the same thing but different colors. <laughs> um, one that I I do like. Well, I mean, you got Optimus Prime and Nemesis Prime. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but even like the Scourge and Toxitron, like Legacy ones, are pretty cool. <coughs> yep. R- um, like seeing how many different, how extreme characters you can get out of one mold, how they can be so different. They've done right. that with uh, um, Grimlock also. You get the G2 Here lately, version. yeah. G2, and there's a comic book version coming. There's a uh, Shattered Glass version. Yeah. Which I still need to get that one. It's, it gets yeah. kind of taxing when you're like on your fourth or fifth of buying the same gosh dang figure. Uh-huh. Some people, yeah. I, know a, I know some collectors that definitely look at it like, I'm getting one of that mold. Yeah. Like... Sure. I just got to pick. Okay and it just sucks uh, as a collector. The first one, version you get probably isn't the one you would have picked if you knew all five of them that were coming out in the next three years. Sure. But, like, that's how they get you, you know? Like, they know they're going to save the one you really yeah. want for the end. But it usually, <laughs> well, also, like, they find the problems and then fix them usually. They do, and they listen to fans and fan feedback like you said they put the heart on roboto cuz they know they got a lot of grief for that i'm sure and well i think that just came down to they made the mini comic version yeah, yeah. i mean if they weren't going to do a mini comic one they wouldn't have when it's the the same that. character <laughs> over and over like i usually just buy one um i don't really feel the need to buy the multiples occasionally but i just know that Starscream always comes out first, and mm-hmm. where Starscream goes, there's at least two more coming no matter what. I'm getting a Thundercracker and a Skywarp all day, every day, no matter oh, for what. The mold. The for mold that, them. yeah, the, the same mold. mold. It's going to be a different, whatever it is, whatever version it is, whether it's a Cybertronian jet or whatever, sure, it will be repainted at least two more times, right. no yeah. matter what. Like, if you see an Ironhide, you're getting a Ratchet, no matter what. <laughs> Whoever comes first, you're getting the other one. Same with the Coneheads. They're just a very popular one for Transformers. I'm trying to think of outside, outside our two toy lines. I know. I was struggling. I was like, I, that's why I remembered the Final Faction stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, all those are repaints. There's other toys? I know. Uh, yeah. I mean, to me, all the Joes look the same, so I don't even know. Yeah, how you tell? There, I mean, molds. there's some that are like <laughs> they uh, for the Snow Patrol stuff. Yeah, they made them, you know, all Arctic, and then right, take the same thing, same repaint thing. them, or your basic character, and right? 
Because oh, yeah, the uh, the Tiger Force yep. stuff. That's, that's all. A repaint. That's all repaint <laughs> of like st- the whole Those thing. Characters. Yeah, the whole thing between with Tiger Force was with the vehicles. It, the Joes like stole uh, Cobra vehicles and then repainted them Joe color, like for Joe stuff. Like that was the whole like history behind of that is like they just stole their vehicles and then repainted them for themselves. <laughs> Isn't uh, like Godzilla just the same toy over and over again? I think so. Oh man, Brian Clark is just gonna <laughs> fucking come unglued. Star Wars, probably you know a lot of repaints there. They're always repainting Star Wars shit with those. I mean, like Darth Vader's are there. Yeah, um, clone troopers. Yeah, it's always a new version. Yeah, repaints. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Yeah. Both. <laughs> That's true. Love and hate them. It's a love hate relationship, I think. For real. All right, let's take a quick break. We're going to tell you all about our podcast network, The PFPN. That stands for the Prescribed Films Podcast Network, a place you should visit while you're doing all them other surfing the interwebs. If you go to www.thepfpn.com, you can see our network and all the other cool shows there. This nice lady's going to tell you all about it. You're listening to the Prescribed Films Podcast Network, home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment. The shows on this network all have a common goal, providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening. Yo, Elgin. Yo, Jason. It's time to take us on a store tour. All right, today's store is called Yo, Joe Depot. I'm sure they say that as soon as you enter the store. Right. It's like, Welcome like- to Yo, Joe Depot. Uh, they should. It's at 21 North Park Avenue in Hohenwald, Tennessee. Uh, it's about an hour and a half southwest of Nashville, uh, if you're in Nashville. And about nine hours and 13 minutes from Matoma, if, <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to drive there. Let's gas it up. Man. Yeah. Uh, it has a bunch of Motu, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Star Wars, Marvel, DC, and much more. And did you know that Hohenwald, Tennessee, is the home of the Elephant Sanctuary? It's a nonprofit organization that provides a home for retired elephants from zoos and circuses. I believe they have 2,700 acres. Uh, and it's not open to the public, but it is there for. I thought elephants. you were going to say 2,700 elephants. Like, yeah. That's a lot of elephants. That's, <laughs> yeah. I think they, have, they said that at one point they had up to about 32 elephants. They have both Asian and African elephants there. Um, they have heated barns and everything, but it's basically for elephants that have been mistreated. And uh, retired from zoos and circuses around, and they have a place to stay uh, to live out the rest of their lives. So that's at Hohenwald, Tennessee. But the store Yo Joe Depot is found at 21 North Park Avenue in Hohenwald, Tennessee. <laughs> All right, let's hear from you guys. Here's Spooty with Talking Toys. <laughs> Um, Hi, got got a got a few here. Let me get it where I can actually see it. Oh, but which one to start with? Um, I should have read the names. I didn't read the names before this. Uh-oh. Uh, No Soyo sixty nine sixty one says it's always good to have options. I might not like the original one deco, but a repaint better. It's true. And then. Shake hand emoji? I don't know. Um, that's what it's, what's there. Okay. <laughs> um, Carnivious 
Scotty. Is that Scotty? Yep. Uh, I hate that barricade. <laughs> yeah, who I just got out. That guy. He's such a cool Baver spot, and they. I don't, know, I don't think that's the one that they. He's talking about. Um, Baver's, yeah. Baver spot, and they had a really great G one ified version of this TLK from the Evergreen line. I don't know what he's talking about. The last night. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. For the Evergreen line. Well, the main movie line, probably. Oh, okay. Uh, they could have used for a siege, but instead they simply repainted the Dotson mold. Bleh. Um, come back. It was a Dotson. Yeah. yeah. And Seekers, dot, dot, dot. Yep. <laughs> Hasbro loves an excuse to release any Seeker mold into all sorts of colors. Not just the main three. Six if you include the cone heads, but they need unique wings. <laughs> uh, oh, and black versions of Optimus called Nemesis Prime or Scourge. Bleh. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Willis Wheeler says, uh... It all depends on the toy. <laughs> and he is... Well, yeah, Willis. A rising contributor. Oh. It's true. It does depend on the toy, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Bob Dabalina. I thought... Oh, bam, boom. Oh, I always thought that was a made-up name. No, that's really... Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. It seems made is up. It, and... But is it? I mean, maybe it still is. I mean, who's named Bob anymore? Right, yeah. Bob. <laughs> I'm fine with them when it's using one mold for another established character. I don't like it when they use the mold to make the the new character via repaint. Oh, the opposite yeah. of your stance. Yeah. Um, Patrick Stal- Stralko. <laughs> Look at the letters. Didn't see them. Yes. Um, <laughs> says, I think they serve a purpose. The Seekers were yeah. all designed the same. Reuse helps the company save money to make more toys. I think they're getting enough money. I don't think they have enough money. Profits are down. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's true. They actually are down. David Scott King, a level one contributor. To whichever I don't even know. Bandit toys Um, group. Yeah. yeah. Uh, When the characters look alike, such as Sideswipe and Sunstreaker, or Seekers, then it makes perfect sense. But at times it just seems like a bit of cash grab to reuse a mold like the Siege Ironhide mold. Get that cash. And that's it. That is it. That Thank is you it. guys. And gals. That's, that's awesome. So there might be. We'll just say they did it too late. Cool. Very cool. Thank you guys for commenting. That's great to hear. And if you're you know listening to this later, leave us a comment what you think about repaints. We'd love to know. Yeah, we'll definitely get back to you about that. But before we go today, we definitely want to say thanks for listening. And if you want to help, help support the show, you can do that. Tell a friend, subscribe on all the places. But the thing we love the most is when you go over to Apple Podcasts, you leave a five-star review. Or if you just... Five subscribe. stars is good. Five stars. We love five stars. Better than four stars. That's for sure. Yeah, that's true. But uh, one of the cool perks over on Patreon that you can sign up for is you get your name read on the show like these fine people, except Tony Miller and then these fine people, Chris <laughs> Turnip <laughs> Simmons, so Peter Glinsman, Alex LaForest, comedian Bill Fisher, Michelle Puzzullo. All right. Yeah. Sweet. Sounds good. Who's making the hot dogs today? Not it. Not it. Oh, we're at Spooties. You should. You better have relish. Thank you guys so much. Mustard. That's all I have. For watching. <laughs> I don't hear it. I don't know what happened. Okay. There it goes. Thanks for watching and listening. Oh my gosh. Talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye bye. <laughs> See ya. Toodaloo. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Cracktastic Plastic Podcast. But not so fast, my foul teams. Don't forget to follow these fools on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And visit cracktasticplastic.com. I'll be back. <laughs> hey there, gang. Still listening? I'd like to take this brief moment to invite you to help support this independent podcast. By supporting the show, you get access to episodes early, shout-outs on the show, 
and be part of our exclusive chat. To learn more, go to patreon.com slash cracktasticplastic. <laughs>